discovering the purpose of God for your life. So in this service, I will be doing part six of discovering the purpose of God for your life. A bit of a recap, then we go into what we want to share today. Today I'll be talking about a subtopic I call benefit of divine guidance. Um, when you follow God's leading, there are things you benefit as a person. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before you came into the world, there is something God wants you to do. Jeremiah 29 11. I know the plan I have for you, declared the Lord. The plan to prosper you. So God has a plan for your life. The plan to give you a hope and a future. Can you say amen to that? Amen. God said he has planned for your life. Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9. Back to King James Version. Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9. My thoughts are not your thoughts. There's something I'm thinking about you. You are thinking about something else and I'm thinking about something else. Neither my ways, your ways. And verse 9 says, As heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thought higher than your thought. So this month of divine encounter is for us to align with the purpose of God, the ways of God, the thought of God, the plan of God for our life. It's for somebody to discover that thing that God has ordained for your life before you came into this world. And I expose to you that this plan of God is a glorious one. God didn't plan it that you will fail. He didn't plan you will see shame. Yeah. Romans 8, 29 and 30. Romans 8, 29 and 30. Those whom God foreknew, he gave them a destiny. He predestinated. And those whom he gave a destiny so that they can be conformed to the image of the Son, who is the firstborn among many of us, among many brethren. And verse 30, because he gave them a destiny, he called them. And those whom he called, he declared them not guilty, justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So your destiny must end in glory. The plan God has for you is not to put you to shame. It's not to ridicule you. It's a plan of glory. Can I hear amen to that? Yeah. So God planned for his church to see glory, to experience glory, to, to enjoy glory. His plan for us is a glorious plan. He didn't plan. The plan of God for you is not a small plan. You are the one thinking small. One of the scriptures I read to you, Isaiah 54 verse 2 on Sunday, is to think big. I think message translation says so. He said, think big. Kim James Version says, lengthen your, your, your cord. He said, think big. Use plenty of rope. Maybe somebody is saying, I will manage it. I will manage it. God is saying, no, don't manage. Think big. Can I hear amen? amen. His plan is big. It's glorious. And you know, Proverbs 14 12. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right to man. The end thereof is a way of death. With all this, you just have to align with the plan of God for your life. You are thinking one, God is thinking hundred. You are thinking small, God is thinking big. His plan for your life is glorious. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. Do you know, tonight we are talking about benefit of this divine guidance. First Samuel 38, David inquired of the Lord. David just suffered a defeat. Naturally, David coming back, he should chase after the enemy. David went out and before he could come back, his whole family, the wife, the children, they have been taken captive. In our days, they have been kidnapped. His house was burnt down. Things were just upside down. And not just David. David and all his servants and people around him. Things were not working. So when they came, the Bible says they cried. When men cried, then it's a serious matter. They cried until they had no more strength to cry. But in the midst of this problem, 
Bible says in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this enemy? Will I overtake them? And he answered him. Now, make sure your amen is louder than your neighbor. This month, God will answer you. He answered him, pursue, for you will surely overtake them and without fail, recover all. Without fail, and I think that word is for somebody, recover all. Whatever you have lost, without fail, recover all. So David suffered a defeat, but he would not allow the problem to make him misbehave. He inquired of the Lord. Before you take any major step of your life, ask God, shall I take this job? Shall I go into this relationship? This proposal that is awaiting a yes, shall I say yes? Praise God. Or I say no. Lord, what are you saying? Do I go into this accommodation? I'll be talking about location in this school of divine uh, guidance. I'll be talking about the power of location. How a place can determine your life. People have picked up accommodation that ruined them. They've gone to place of worship that turned their life upside down. The power of place. You know, they step into territory that is like a journey of no return. Travel out and things not working. And there are others who travel out and things are working for them. The fact that somebody is doing it does not mean that is your own destination. Every one of us, seven billion people on the surface of earth, our destiny differs. The same way nobody has my fingerprint. Nobody has your highball. It's unique. God created you in a unique way. So the fact that it's working for sister A does not mean it's meant for sister B. You must inquire from the Lord. That's why we're talking about divine purpose, divine guidance this month of October. And tonight we want to look at what are the benefits, the things we're going to enjoy. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. He says, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe, not only to listen to God. Last Thursday I was sharing with you the way God leads. And one of the ways God leads is through his voice, the voice of the spirit, the inner witness, the word of God, and visions and revelations. But here, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, he said, if you are diligently, listen to what I'm saying to you, and don't just listen, do, observe to do the commandment of the Lord this day. He said, I will set you on high above how many nations? So you're listening to me and doing what I say to you will make you be above all nations. This is what divine guidance does to a man. It takes you to nations and territory. No consular can deny you visa. Nobody is saying amen to that. Yeah. When God leads, you become the envy of people around you. Envy of your world. I will set you on high above the nations of the world. God only lead a man to profit. God does not lead to shame a man. It does not lead a man to go down in his life. So the things you are thinking about, I want to do this, I want to do that, God is saying, oh, just allow me. He said, if you only hearken and observe to do the things I say to you, I will set you on high. So don't look for visa, look for the voice of God. Listen to him, do what he tells you. Visa will happen with ease. Can I hear amen to that? <laughs> You will struggle for it. It will just come like one of those things. There are people hearing me tonight. You won't struggle for job again. Amen. Job will be looking for you. Amen. Because when God leads, people profit. When God leads, he set them on high above the nation. When you are above America, why will you struggle to go to America? Do you believe what you read at all? 
He said, if you hearken diligently, Deuteronomy 28, we just write verse 1, and observe to do the things I tell you, I will set you on high above the nation. Is the nation in plural? Is this just Nigeria? Is this just Togo? How many nations is here? All nations. All nations of the earth. So is Canada exempted from this scripture? Is America exempted from this scripture? United Kingdom exempted? How many nations? All the nations. What am I to do? Observe to do. Listen to what God is saying to you. When you follow him, you will shine. When you follow him, your life will be glorious. No setback, no shame, no reproach. Because you act him diligently to the voice of God. So when God leads, he leads into profit. Isaiah 48, 17. Isaiah 48, 17. Uh, he said, you will remember the Lord your God because I am the one that teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. I only teach people to profit. When God leads, the income statement is profit or profit account. I'm sure the accountant will understand what I'm saying. God does not lead into profit or loss. There is no loss. There is no there is no downtime when it comes to God. I am the one that teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. If you allow me to teach you, you will certainly make profit. Even in 2020, the year of coronavirus, you will still make profit. I am the one that teach you to profit. We have two months for this year to end. It is too much for God to turn your life around. And, and I prophesy tonight, the things you have not seen in the first 10 months of this year, the last two months, November, December, you will see surprises. Divine lifting, divine surprises, divine encounter, turn around like you have never seen before, testimony like you have never seen before. There are people who have been chasing jobs from January. From now, testimony will land in your house. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am the one that teach you to profit. Or if I were you tonight, I would lift up my tongue and say, Lord, teach me. Uh, because you have taught yourself, look at where you are. But let God teach you tonight. I am the one that teach you to profit and lead you in the ways that you should go. Lord, I surrender all to you. Just teach me. Lead me in the way you should go. Now, in this school of divine guidance, nobody graduates. This is a message that needs to be preached over and over again. Pastor need it, choir member need it, workers need it, everybody need it. Because the day you say you graduate from this school, then you begin to lead yourself. And you know there is limitation. Without me, you can do nothing. Absolutely. Jesus says so. So the moment you say, oh, I have arrived, God leave, you become your own GPS. You will enter, go slow. If you lead yourself. Benefit of divine guidance number one. The benefit of divine guidance number one, divine presence. John 8, 29. Divine presence. Wow. Even pronouncing it and feeling certain things on this altar here. John 8, 29. He that sent me is with me. Somebody shout, God is with me. My father has not left me alone. Why? Because I do the things that please him. If you please God, you will enjoy his presence. And how do you please him? Just do what he says. He that sent me is with me. When people come against you, this is a remnant you need to go with from this service. And tell them, the one who sent me is with me. No matter the opposition, there is a God behind Highland Church. He that sent me is with me. This is from Jesus himself. And as long as God is with me, no obstacle can stand. No opposition can stand. Divine presence. When he sent me, he doesn't leave me alone. He backs me up. He that sent me is with me. The question is, what you are doing, did God send you? If he didn't send you, you will back yourself. But if he sent you, then you enjoy heaven's backing. The whole of heaven is behind you. Anyone who touched you, they touch the apple of God's eye. He that sent me is with me. 
So, part time, you must always ask God before you venture. Lord, as I go into this, are you with me? Are you in this? Is this just a burning bush? Is this voice your voice? Then you bring it down to the word level because the word of God and the voice of God cannot contradict. You be sure that before you venture, God is the one sending you. And when God sent you, no help. This is why Jesus was successful in his ministry. Because he said, he that sent me is with me. So if I said blind eyes open, it has no choice but to open. Because the one who sent me is there. He's the one opening the eyes, performing the miracle. Let him send you. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. And when he guides you, he backs you up. Isaiah 45 from verse 1 to 5, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 3. He said, this is, that said the Lord to Cyrus, whose hand have I opened, holding. And I hold his hand to subdue nations before him. Please, if you know all this scripture, you will not die to go to any nation of the world. You are bigger than America. Who is that person here tonight? bigger than United Kingdom. He said, I will hold your hand and with that hand I'm holding, I will subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings. So the kings of the world, they come begging you for solution. I will open to him the two-leaf gate and this gate shall never be shut. Please make sure your amen is fire. I declare open door of favor to you. Now make the amen seven times and that door will never be shut. No, I mean make it once but seven times utter. So whether you say amen once or amen, amen, amen seven times, God has a prayer. I, I only want, I want, I want the, the, the intensity of that prayer. And I declare, so what you have just done is a real answer. Now, do the real one now. It's just once, but very odd. I declare that that favor door open to you will never be shut. That door will never be shut. So, verse 1, I will open to him the two-leaf gate, and this gate shall not be shut. Verse 2 is the real thing. Verse 2 is the real thing. He said, I will go before thee. That's his presence. God's presence going with me as I go for this exam. God's presence going with me as I go for lecture. God's presence going with me as I go home tonight. I will go before you. And what will I do when I go before you? Every cobwebs on the way. Every iron bar on the way. Every problem on the way. He said, I will make the crooked place straight. I will deal with area boys who want to collect your phone. I will make the crooked place straight and I will break in pieces the bars of brass. The gate, the pieces, the gate of bath, and cutting us under the bars of iron. Any obstacle, he said, because I go before you. Let him go before you. And verse 3, the blessing continues. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Once I clear the way, you just begin to prosper. Amen. Treasures, the hidden riches of secret places. This is the benefit of presence. When God goes before you, mountain are they come down he summoned them as if they never existed and there are things that you look like oh this thing is problematic how can this thing be how will this thing be how will 20 how will i end 2020 listen to me the things you look that look like a problem the egyptian you see today you see them no more yeah. trouble you see today you see them. be it financial or emotional solution is coming right now yeah. why because his guidance bring presence. And when God goes before you, the crooked paths, they are made straight. No more trouble. Uh, you know, I've been sharing about how Israel left Egypt. If you read Psalm 14, 114, Psalm 114 from verse 1, it gave us a graphic illustration how they left Egypt and how the presence of God gave them victory. Egypt, Israel went out of Egypt. The, the house of Jacob from the people of a strange language. Verse 2. Somebody here, you are leaving Egypt. 
Judah was his sanctuary, and you know Judah. Judah means praise. Psalm 22, verse 3 says, God inhabits the praise of his people. Judah was his sanctuary. Verse 2, 114, verse 2. Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel is dominion. Now, when praise goes before them, Judah is, means praise, and God stays or tabernacle in the midst of praise. Verse 3 now, so praise is going, God is going ahead. The sea saw God, the sea saw it, and it fled. Jordan was driven back. You know, what that means is that trouble was coming like this, but the moment he saw God, the sea saw it, and it fled. And Jordan was driven back. This is what the presence of God can do to any man. Verse 4. The moment they see God in you, problems begin to run for you. Do you know after this month of divine purpose, no more trouble in your life? Because you won't do anything without God anymore. That's what it means. He said the mountain, those mountainous problems you've been carrying for years, mountain they skip like ram. Do you know how ram, ram run? They were running like ram. They lead to heal like lamb. Then they were wondering, verse 5, and they started asking questions. Verse 5, why are you running sea? Oh, sea, what a lady, oh, sea, that you, were, that you, you fled us. And you, Jordan, why were you driven back? Suddenly, they got to a place. They needed to go to the other side, and Jordan just suddenly dried up. He saw them. He was too afraid of them. They need to walk. The rest, sea parted before them. He said, see, why, are you, why did you flee? And all you, Jordan, why were you driven back? Verse 6, they started asking questions. Mountain, why did you skip like ram? Hill, why did you skip like lamb? And verse 7 now. Verse 7. He said, treble health at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. The head tremble at the presence of God. When God is involved, things work. The head tremble at the presence of the God of Jacob. Please, let God lead you. Then the earth will tremble. Nobody will torment you. Anyone boasting against you, all you need is to be sure that where you are, God has commanded. If God has not commanded, resign and honorable go out. Because without God, is shame. With God, nobody can come against you. The man boasting that I will sack you may not live tomorrow. Because it's See, why are you running? Because I carry the presence of God. No obstacle. God cannot send you to a place and the devil will hijack you on the road. It's not possible. When God sends you, he back you up. He that sent me is with me. Number two, benefit of divine guidance is divine protection. Divine protection. When you are following purpose, you will enjoy angelic protection. Angelic protection. The enemy can't touch you. And from tonight, no more satanic attack. Amen. Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 5, my emphasis for this scripture. Verse 5, Psalm 23, verse 5 now. He said, He prepare a table before me, divine protection, in the presence of my enemy. My enemy was there like this and I'm eating five course meal. And they, they, they said they are going to do something but they can't do anything because you are, you are protected. Protected. Defended. The corn, uh, the, the, the hen or cock, they like to eat corn. But put that corn in a bottle and close it and put it in front of the, uh, of the cock. It will just be using the mouth to touch the thing. It can't eat it because the corn is protected. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It, it goes there. It try. It can't touch it. From tonight, this is how the enemy will try. They can't touch you. Yeah. Why? God's presence defend you. When you follow divine guidance, you get protection, divine protection from God. Exodus 23, verse 20. Exodus 23, verse 20. He said, Behold, I send my angel before you to keep you in all your ways. Say amen to that. Yeah. 
to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Hey, say amen to this one. Uh, this month of October, that place heaven has prepared for you, receive it. 22, verse 22. 23 verse 22 now. Verse 22 now. He said, If you indeed obey his voice and do all I speak, I will be enemy to your enemies. Adversary to your adversary. And verse 23 now. Verse 23. Powerful. He said, My angel will go before you. He will bring, he will bring thee into the Amorite the Etite, the Parasite, the Canaanite, the Evite, the Jebusite. And uh, something now follow. I will cut them off. What is that God saying? He said, you will be coming behind, but before you get to the Jebusite, I kill them. Etite, I kill them. Amorite, I kill them. Before you get there, they are gone. I will take care of business for you. I think that's the word of God for somebody tonight. God says, I will protect. You will be heavily defended, protected. No evil can touch you. Why? Because I have sent my angels to go before you. Please follow God. Obey him. No evil can touch you. Again, all this starts from God's command. God cannot ask you to do something and the enemy will now be harassing you. It's not born. It's not fit. When I receive this mandate, where were you, Satan? You came too late. You can't stop me. You know, when you receive instruction from heaven, you are too bold. You talk with audacity. And the one who called you backs you up. The one who says, do what you are doing. Please, don't do business if God has not commanded. This teaching is not for people who want to be a pastor alone. Anything in your life, don't go into a relationship until you hear from God. Until you are sure God is leading you. Don't take an accommodation. Don't buy a property. Don't go into certain transactions. Don't do partnership with people who will kill you. Praise God. We see all manner of things, evil things. This week, a, a story that touches the heart I saw on social media of an electrician boy who went into a man's house. I don't know how many of you saw that story. And killed the wife, the grandchild of the man, and somebody else in the house. And after killing these people, and it was a gruesome death. He killed them. He said... The grandchild was using knife to peel yam they are going to eat for dinner. And he used that same knife to kill the girl and put the girl in the toilet. He went for the next person, killed the person, put it in the toilet. He went for the, the, the wife of the man, killed the wife, put it in the toilet. He now waited for the man. When the man came, as the man came, he stabbed the man again. The man said he stabbed. How many of you read the story? How many times? Seven times he stabbed the man. And the man was gasping for her. He thought the man is dead because the way he dealt with him. And the guy eventually escaped. Only for them to catch him. And he confessed to everything. In fact, police first arrested the man. They thought the man was the one that killed the wife, the grandchild, that the man maybe had, is insane. They need to do a psycho test for him. Only for them to discover after some time he didn't do it. Evil wickedness under the sun. And I'm asking myself a question. The boy who did this is just 20 something years old. Though. Eh? 24 years old. Evil under the sun. And the man he was dealing with, that man cannot be less than 50 something. 60 something. Because you just want the man's money. You have to, you have to kill a whole generation. Deal with the wife, deal with the grandchild, and one other girl at home and finish all of them. Praise God. Why am I telling you this gruesome story? Is to be careful who you partner with. That was an artisan that comes to the house. He comes to the house and he knows the routine. He knows when the man will come back home. He knows the time and he knows how many people will be at home. He went there when the man was not there to first wipe off the family and waited for the man. So when the man came, he started dealing with the man until the man doesn't have strength anymore. 
And nobody in the community can come to the rescue. He has studied them. He knows their itinerary. Evil under the sun. So let God guide you. The people who come to work for you are satisfied. The people you do business with. There are people you call into business. Their aims and objective is to make sure they kill you and take over the business. There are people who borrow money from you with the intention not to pay back. Troublemaker people. So before you borrow their money, shantrapa, shantalabaya. Lord, whether it's my yellow woe, when you send yellow woe. You are from God. You are from God. There is no small decision, my brothers. No small. I would rather be your friend and we'll still be laughing than to borrow you money and we'll not be enemy. When you see me, you'll be running. And when I ask you, turn you to a fight, say, eh, you call yourself a pastor, why will you be angry? Can't, can't you forget the money? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you come to Bola, I'll tell you, I'm a pastor. Go to bank. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a money lender license. <laughs> so go to bank to borrow. Praise the Lord. What we are teaching this month, you need it for destiny. No small decision. Before you sign that partnership agreement, please take it to the mountain. And when I say mountain, this is mountain, Bethel here. You come here, you are saying, Jesus. Simple prayer will save your destiny. I'm about to go into this transaction. Lord, what are you saying? You may not hear a voice the first time you pray, but God has heard you. He will visit you. He will direct you. He will give you a scripture. He will give you an answer of peace. He will tell you whether to do it or not to do it. Can I hear your loud amen? Please, no small decision. Particularly if you take it before the Lord. Ask him in prayer. And sometimes you ask him, he has not answered you, stay there. There is a place for persistence in hearing the voice of God. There is a particular thing in the last five years I've been asking God about my next level. Asking him, asking him, asking him. He didn't answer me until July this year. In the, I mean June this year in the midst of the pandemic. Somebody just woke up to me said something to me and I said, wow, that is what I have been praying for. Expectation form of form, expectation form. But God said, that is the answer to your prayer. But what if in the fourth year I decide to help myself? I have learned that when God has not given a go ahead, it means stay where you are. If you go for alternative, then you wreck yourself. We need to be divining. In fact, there are decisions we take in the morning. When I go home, I say, Shagra Kapo, Shogalabayada, Lord, what are you saying? In the morning, I reverse myself. I say, I missed it in the morning. In the night, he has visited me, and I say, I'm not doing it again. But one last year or two years ago, we wanted to take a place and we use it for hostel on this road so that our brethren who come for Riaza, our pastors can realize as hostel. And that time we are still at number two, Oway Street. The one of the place was open, and we said, okay, let's go for it. So I already gave a go ahead in the afternoon after service here. When I got home and I pray on that subject matter and I ponder over it, I pray. In the morning, God visited me and said, No, don't do it. So I called Pastor Nee again. I said, I reverse myself. The God, even God who say yes can say no. How much more me? How old am I? <laughs> I look boy John can reverse himself. Then you, you now say you are shy. I told you, even more so, yes, more. <laughs> and a week after, we saw a publication of how a, an hostel was boggled. Why we didn't go into that? How God saved us stress as a ministry. Divine guidance, nobody graduate. All of us, we must be patient with God. You ask him something this year, he has not done, he stay there. Habakkuk 2, verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch. I will wait. That waiting may be 30 days, may be 60, may be 1 year, may be 5 years. For Abraham, it was 25 years. I will wait to hear what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. I will stand. So you go upon your watch, you are standing. Stand upon my watch means I will be praying. If God doesn't answer, you stand upon your watch. 
God did not answer this man until verse 3. Verse 3 now told him, he said, there is something called time. Verse 2, verse 3 now, he said, the vision is for an appointed time. And it will not speak at the beginning. But at the end, it shall speak. Do it, Ali. What did he ask you to do? Wait for it. It will surely come. Your husband is coming. Oh. Leave the other one getting married. Oh. Wait for your own. Don't help yourself. Can this church say amen? amen? No matter how many people you are seeing in your dream, wait. Wait for it. Shaka. Praise the Lord. Number three, divine help. When God is leading you, you receive divine help. Number four, divine ease. Ease, ease is number four. Ease from heaven. Somebody lift up your voice. Oh Lord, lead me. Oh Lord, guide. Oh Lord, guide. I surrender. Can we sing that song? I surrender all to him. Yes, I surrender everything to you, Jesus. Everything, everything, everything. Yes. You. We thought in nothing. We thought in nothing. Yeah, Kabbalah. Somebody pray tonight. Somebody surrender to him tonight. Everything. You, my relationship, Jesus. my career. Everything I give to you. We do the nothing. We do the nothing. Hey, call la 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 Just lift up your two hands. Just lift up your two hands. Hallelujah. Can you hear this? Can you hear this tonight? I hope we are not going to leave October and you are still going to be in a wrong relationship. I hope we are not going to leave October without you getting rid of something that will kill you in the future that will not make the color, the glory you carry to show forth. Somebody think deep. What am I doing right now that seems right to me? That I need to, I need to hand over to Jesus. That I need God to just take over. Take over Jesus. I can't do it on my own. I've tried severally and I've failed. I'm not even happy the way I am right now. Somebody tonight, maybe that night, to cast all your cares and all your burden upon him. As we sing that song, give yourself away. Give everything to him. Lay it at his altar tonight. Cry before him. Pray tonight. Ask God for mercy. I give myself away. Let's sing it one more time. Everybody tonight. Lord, I have I give myself away tonight. Somebody here tonight, you are saying, Pastor, please pray for me. I like to move close to God. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. 
Anywhere you are, can you lift up your right hand? Let me pray for you tonight. Anywhere you are in this hall, tonight is a night of salvation, a night of healing, a night of deliverance. Lift it above your head. Don't be ashamed. It's a night of salvation in this hall, in the overflow. And those of you watching online, it's a night of red dedication. If you're lifting up your hand, say with me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me by your blood. Make me whole. I declare tonight, I'm a child of God. No more to the devil. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. For everyone that made that prayer, I cover you in the blood of Jesus. You will not go back to your vomit. From night, you begin to have testimony. Jesus, my name, I pray. If you said that prayer online, the email address of the ministry is on the screen. I want you to send us a mail that will send you material that will help you to grow as a child of God.